Hey, hey, awesomes. It's your girl, Karee, on AWE Radio, where we are unapologetically empowered and always on, as in 24-7, with information and inspiration for your transformation. Now, let me give some shout outs here. Shout out to the subscribers of AWE News. Shout out to the members of the Empowered Woman Facebook group to the members of Trinity Universal Center Worldwide, and of course, my illustrious co-host in her absence, my mommy, Dr. M. Jean Dolphus Cotton, and also to the new subscribers to AWE Radio. Welcome. We love you. Thank you so much. I love you for listening. And for those of you who are checking me out on YouTube, I love you for watching. Now, for those of you who are new to the station, uh, in this her Woman Evolve series. What we're doing is we're talking to women around the world, various backgrounds, journeys, experiences, to not only preserve our legacies, but to support and grow with each other like true sisters investing in sisters. And I want to take a moment, y'all, to shout out and pay special tribute to the late Brownie Cornell Lewis, an incomparable attorney, professor, author, of both law works as well as nonfiction work, speaking of duality, you guys, and former dean of the North Carolina Central University School of Law, and more importantly, my very best friend of over 35 years. So Dean Lewis was the first interviewee on season one of HWE, and it is our privilege and esteemed pleasure uh, to have named this series in her honor and memory, hence the Brownie Cornell Lewis, her Woman Evolved series. So welcome to the program. Now listen, 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 listen. Y'all put your seatbelts on. Because today you are in. <laughs> no, she did not just put the seatbelt on. I love it when you play along. I love it when you play along. I'm so excited. I am so very excited to kick off season two of H HWE with a dynamic duo amazing both in their respective and collective rights but let me just say you all and I am too we are all in for a treat so let's get on to it so we have today the great Nikita Nichelle Gatson who's the founder and principal counsel and consultant of Ascension Solutions she is is an Illinois licensed attorney as am I as well as Minnesota and a certified compliance and ethics professional with over 10 years of professional experience in various corporate settings. As both a creative and analytical thinker, Nikita holds a Bachelor of Science in Music Business from Elmhurst University and a Juris Doctor degree from Chicago Kent College of Law. Now, when she's not advising clients, she feeds her creative side. You didn't hear that. She feeds her, I love that because I love that when you feed your soul. She mm -hmm. feeds her creative side by listening to, performing and recording music as a vocalist under the persona Nikita Nichelle. And as a co-host as on the Black Coffee with the Side of Candor podcast. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Nikita was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois and is the proud mother to two amazing daughters. And it, as if that weren't enough, <laughs> we also have Ms. Monique Gibson, who is the CEO and principal consultant of JMCO Consulting, a boutique business consulting firm. Say that with me, y'all, boutique business <laughs> consulting firm. <laughs> she is an attorney and prior legal slash HR executive with over 17 years of corporate experience across various industries. She specializes in talent strategies, and don't we need that, and structuring productive, mm -hmm. I gotta say that again, productive workplaces. She is an army veteran, thank you for your service, mm -hmm. who served two tours of duty in Germany, and the second tour was on special assignment at the Pentagon. Come on now. <laughs> Monique currently resides in Dallas, Texas with her family. And together, you guys, these women comprise the saucy new podcast titled Black Coffee with a Side of Candor. 
Welcome to AWE Radio, ladies. Hey, we are so and thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. I would have it no other way. How y'all feeling? Great. Super blessed. Look, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I love all of this duality. Uh, You guys were gracious enough to have me on your podcast uh, recently, and I'm very appreciative uh, to you of that. And we just have this theme going about duality, and I see that in your very brief bios. And you guys, let me just say, if I I really asked them to give me the full bios, we wouldn't have enough time to ask the question. (laughs) So I'm going to open it up and just ask you just one at a time. Nikita, we'll start with you. Just tell us a little bit more about your background. Yeah, so I am the oldest of three girls, as as Corey mentioned, born and raised on the south side of the city of Chicago. Um, And I went to high school focusing on performing arts. So I traveled on public transportation from the south side to the north side to be able to attend Lincoln Park High School and, and engage in their performing arts programs and went from there to college where I studied music business. As you can see, music is and has always been in me. And then um, when I had to pursue a law degree and um, you know, I knew early on in my career that being in a law firm or that kind of environment wasn't really for me. I don't think it matched well with the creative side of my brain. So um, I, I've start, I've had a career in higher education. I worked for nonprofit organizations. And so I've been um, servicing in-house legal departments for mostly all of my career. Mm. And um, in between that, I have established my own consulting and legal, legal and regulatory consulting practice, which is known as Ascension Solutions. And we provide legal and regulatory support and counsel to higher education institutions, to nonprofit organizations, as well as entrepreneurs who are looking to build up or start up their own businesses and need support with what all that means. If you have a contract and you don't know what all of that crazy language means, (laughs) I'm here to support those who need the review of contracts and things of that nature. Um, And I sing as Corey pointed out. And I do that because I love it. And it has filled that creative side of of my passion. And I do that. And I co-host the Black Coffee with a Side of Candor podcast with Monique. And that has been an amazing, amazing and fulfilling accomplishment. And on top of that, I have two teenage dogs. My goodness. My goodness. I, I I think I have to ask, how in the world do you do it? <laughs> Ooh, you know, it's lots of prayer yes. and a good membership to Cooper's Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get back to that. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. I love that. And Monique, come on and tell us a little bit more about you. So, you know, you should have had me go first. I don't want to follow <laughs> Nikita is all illustrious. And look, I was a late bloomer. I clowned in high school, flunked out of college my first year. Uh, Army recruiter called, said, hey, how would you like to jump out of planes? I was like, hey, right up my alley because I was an athlete. I was a thrill seeker, wasn't scared of anything. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, Joined the military, got sent overseas, uh, loved it. Uh, Came back to the States. I was at the Pentagon, you know, just, it was was what I needed. It was the discipline I needed. and it really saved saved a part of me that I didn't even know existed, which was confidence. Like I just didn't have any um, confidence in just who I was and my brains and all that good stuff. So um, then got out, you went to undergrad, then uh, went to law school, Chicago, Kent, same law school uh, Nikita went to, uh, went back. Got my un- no. no, 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 I was, oh. I was a few years ahead of Nikita. Um, Then I went back, got my MBA, uh, then just kind of fell into the HR employment law space because, uh, you know, I'm just, I I, I don't have a problem with the the complicated, sensitive conversations. They have to be had, you know, as long as we have the respect, like, let's talk. So 
I always was the one like, I'm oh, Monique, you go talk to him. You go, you go talk to the president. You go to, and I'm like, no, my <laughs> but, um, but it, it, it really developed me and, and, and really honed those, those talent and, and people skills that I have. So, um, worked how 17 plus years, um, just really struggled in corporate America because coming from the military to corporate was it was a really big transition from going from I'll do whatever needs to be done here you don't need to tell me twice I got it to uh, being micromanaged and you know just not being entrusted to do things and you know that the, the the thought of team player not the same as it was and like I got you back in the military so just the politics of it, oh. it was a real struggle for me so um, started my consulting firm. Um, and dibble, dibble dabbling, is that a dibble dabbing <laughs> in uh, government contracting? Uh, mm. So super excited. And, and well, I know I don't want to get ahead of myself. I was going to say how Nikita and I met, but I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, listen, there is no getting ahead. That is, there's absolutely no getting ahead. And I love how you had kind of that like sense of adventure. Oh, jump out of planes, let's go. You know, I'm like, what? Oh. You know, if you're asking me to jump out of plane, I'm like, somebody's got to write the story. So you jump and I'll write, you know, kind yeah. of, thing. I love that. And so how was that? And I know we're going to get into this a little bit more later, but navigating that whole thing, like the whole sense of adventure against being able to have difficult conversations where nobody else was really able to have that. Like, it was there some kind of similarity? Is that just some kind of stuff that you're made of? Or is that something that you developed over time? I I think a part of that is what I'm made of and it was just developed. Um, I was always a kid because I was always taller than everybody else and I was an athlete. So I didn't do bullies. Like if somebody was getting bullied, yeah, not on my watch. So yeah. um, like I, I didn't care, boy, girl, it didn't matter. Well, um, I can and, really see you grabbing somebody and throwing them across the room. <laughs> but you know, it's funny, I never had to. I never had to. I was just very direct. And I was like, what's the deal? Like, why are you picking on somebody that's not as strong as you are? That's because and then, then you also see you picking them up and throwing you. Them. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's so interesting that you guys, you know, even though you had different paths, your journeys led you, you know, mm -hmm. along some of the same stops, like going to Kent like, and all of you going to Chicago. Like I lived in Chicago or in the Chicago area. I might get in trouble if I say I lived in Chicago because I lived in Vernon Hills, but no, nobody know anything about Vernon Hills. <laughs> Yeah, and Evanston for I went to Evanston Township High School, but it's just really I don't believe in coincidences. I just think mm -hmm. that you know you go on your path, and you know you go on your path, and somehow or another those things come together, and everything happens just the when it's supposed to happen, the right place at the right time. Hence, black coffee. Yes, black side coffee. of candor. Come on, somebody has got to tell me how did you guys find each other for one, and then two. Why Black Coffee with a Side of Candor? I love it. I love that title, by the way. You know, LinkedIn actually brought us together. And I think LinkedIn, if you're listening, you should hire us to do a, a LinkedIn Live about the power of connecting on LinkedIn. We are like a real success story for, for what that means to yes. connect and network with people on LinkedIn and actually bring something to life. So Absolutely. we did not meet in law school. We had never crossed paths before it's kind of like what you you said things happen for a reason we were both in position to reinvigorate our entrepreneurial journeys right and so I I was trying to figure out okay how do I get people to know what I'm doing and and, and all of that and I saw I don't even know how Monique came on my feed at all but I saw a video she was doing like Hey, I don't really know what I'm doing, but here goes the video that's talking about what I'm doing. And I know that <laughs> part about what I'm doing. So, and she started this series. I mean, it, it really was like, you know, I just need to do that. I, I need to step out and do it. And this is me. And this is what I have to offer. And I was like, well, that's brave. And then I looked her up and I'm like, oh, we went to the same law school. And I had no problem jumping to somebody's message box, talk to say, hey, girl, um, this is who I am. We actually went to the same law school. I'm inspired by what you're doing. I'd love to talk to you more about, I think, so she was doing more of the um, professional uh, development kind of HR side of things. And I was doing more of the legal and regulatory. So at first I'm like, well, there's some parallels about what we're doing. Maybe we could 
do some work together in, in our respective practices. So that's where I was angling to connect with, with Monique on. And then we started talking and we had had so many similar professional experiences in corporate America. Um, and it was almost like therapy to be able to speak to another Black woman who had survived a lot of the struggles and traumas that we so often experience in those settings and had took took the courage to step out on, on her own to create safe space to live and thrive. And so it was like, okay, this is someone I need, we need to link elbows and 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 do this thing called being a Black female entrepreneur together and learn together. So maybe we could build on that. And and it was it was like um, a match made in heaven. I, I you would never know that we have only known each other six months. No, <laughs> the chemistry is off the chain. I would never have known. But I love what you're talking about because that's why we're doing this series. And that's why really at the end of the day, you're doing what you're doing. Like we don't live in isolation. We really don't, particularly as women. You know, you might've been at one corporation, you might've been maybe even the government, you might've been jumping out of planes, but we experience similar things. And oftentimes we feel like we're the only ones who are experiencing a particular thing. But I just think it's so important for us to share our stories because somebody's going to go, you know, you could, I, I love it, you know, when you can just see the heads going, oh, you know, because people can relate to that and they see somebody else living their journey and they're yeah. going, oh, you know, and I love also that you're not afraid to reach out. Yeah. So I love that. I love that a lot. Now, Monique, why, why black coffee? I mean, it almost kind of explains itself, but so it's not to be presumptuous. Why yeah. black coffee with a well, side of candy? With a side of candy. Yeah. So so I think you can kind of tell from our personalities, you know, Nik Nikita is the more, you know, <laughs> distinguished and very professional. And I'm more, hi, I'm here. <laughs> you know, and and I just want to kind of go back to the chemistry. Um, so remember, I'm a thrill seeker. So when somebody says, Do you want to jump? I'm like, okay, let's go. We we leave in what in 10 minutes? So when we connected on the phone, I was kind of like, okay, is this just a serious or, you know, but our energy was like, you couldn't deny it. I yeah. mean, just, I liked her presence, yeah. just our conversation. Um, and, and I thought, man, you know, and then we started throwing out some ideas and I think Nikita said, we should do a podcast. Mm. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I'll jump out of the plane. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, like, really? Like, yeah, let's do it. And she's like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I said, I don't need it. Let's do it. Wow. <laughs> and I was kind of calling her bluff. And, and she did it. And I was like, well, all right. Wow. And she don't play. When, when Monique is like, listen, I don't, I don't do the let's wait till next month. We're going to do it next week. We, we need to meet every week. We need to get this going. That. We need to. So she she is, it's, that's why I think in terms of the chemistry, our similar interests and perspectives, but enough of a distinct uh, characteristics that keep us on our toes because um, it just it just works that way. Monique is not we we ain't we, wait for what we gonna figure yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no Do it idea. Scared even right? Do it scared yeah. to hear that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, and that. and and one of the things like Nikita said, we kind of shared our corporate experiences. And, and, and this, as silly as it sounds, you really do think you're the only one. Yeah. So when you hear other people, you're like, wait, wait a minute. You, I experienced that same doggone mm -hmm. thing. And we kind of talked through that, but we wanted to provide a platform where it wasn't just, woe is me, girl. you know, so girl, were you microman? Yeah, I was too. But more of a, we survive and there's life after the trauma. Mm -hmm. So, so we were both very adamant about acknowledging that there is major trauma against black women professionals and against others in the workplace, mm -hmm. but there's life after that. I love that um, so much. And, and, yeah. and sharing the tools, like what, what worked yeah. for you, you yeah. know, and, and, you know, just being a part of each other's network and really supporting and truly investing in each other. Cause you're right. We, we, Sometimes it just seems like we all are on the very same journey, maybe different twists and turns and paths, but at the end of the day, we're all getting to the same place. So yeah. I love that. I love, well, you, you, you talked about 
something there that sparked a little something in me. Um, Monique, I want to talk about when you said, you know, we go through these things at work in our corporate environments or wherever people are, it doesn't even have to be corporate, wherever you are, you're going to experience some of these same things. What, what are some of the things that stick out for you, whether it was a success or a pain point or just anything you want to share? I think for me, um, and I say this all the time. So, so TD Jake said that, you know, black women have more degrees than a thermometer, <laughs> but there's something inherent in us. I don't know if it's cultural or what, but mm. we always feel like we have to continue to prove ourselves. Doesn't matter that we have three, four, six, 15 degrees from the top universities in the world. We always feel like we have to prove ourselves. So I was no different. You know, I, I always felt like, you know, oh, I'll have to prove myself. I'll work 80 hours this week. Oh, next week I'll work a hundred hours, you know, to the point I was on the phone at my kids' games. I wasn't focused on the game. Like, and my husband was like, like, you're not, you're here, but like, you're not here. Right. Um, and then when I left corporate for good, going through, I went through a, a, a program, a coaching program that really helped me to see like, I was already enough. I didn't have to prove anything and the people that I worked with knew that I was more than enough Mm. but it benefited them for me to feel like I wasn't so that they could keep me under their thumb and I allowed it I allowed it I wasn't aware of it but now I am now 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 I stand in my confidence I am smart I'm very good at what I do yeah five years ago I never would have said that yeah but now oh yeah Girl, look, sis, you are more than enough. You Thank you are awesome man. in every facet. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah. Um. And and I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited about the journeys and the breakthroughs that I'm seeing a lot of Black women having. It's exciting. Mm. Mm. I just want to jump that. in and say that. that you know I think Monique. I was thinking about why why do we feel that way? And I wonder if some of it is when we get into these rooms and these spaces, there are so few of us mm-hmm. that we feel like unicorns. Like, oh, I don't know how I got here, but I gotta do I gotta do a whole song and dance and mm-hmm. acrobatic show to stay here. Mm-hmm. Um and, and and then we we overproduce, over overuse our voice, and those things become. Um, intimidating or off-putting or people can't interpret our tone um, because they haven't taken the time to understand culturally who we are because there's so few of us that exist in those spaces. So to your point of knowing, hey, you might get in these rooms and you deserve to be there and that's it. You go in there being authentically who you are. And I know people will say, you can't do that. And let's be clear, you have to be wise in how you show up in your authenticity. Now, the way in which you're going to speak to your homegirls from back in the day, that's not how you would go in conducting a meeting, right? But you can, if this if this is a tone that you use, you don't have to turn into a, a use the dialect of cultures that you are not a part of to, to fit in. So I would just say, you know, just we, we have to own our identities and not be um be un- not be unashamedly who we are 100 mm-hmm. percent. you guys are hold on folks first of all if, <laughs> if, if you just joined i'm so sorry you missed the fr- front part of it because it's just been jam after jam after jam dropped in here but you are listening to the host and well co-host i, I don't know what you want to call it, the the women of power uh <laughs> black coffee with a side of candor and they are dropping some some nuggets and and you guys are both so 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 right i think it's really important to be yourself but you have to you know read the room right Mm -hmm. you have to under you have to understand where you are and you wouldn't deliver a message to a baby the same way you would deal get deliver a message to a 45 year old man Mm -hmm. or woman so you just read the room but i think it's important for us to know what you said there it's look you're good enough you are enough. And the reason sometimes we think that is you're you're right, uh, Nikita. I think that we're, there's so few of us, we start to get in our own heads. Like, oh my God, nobody looks like me or few people look like me. So I'm different. Now I feel the presence of my difference. You know, mm-hmm. I feel that. And, and then we get in our own heads. 
uh, about that. But but we do. We have to understand that we are enough. And we also have to, women, ladies, if you are one of those few people and you send someone else that's coming to the table, you have to grab that system, Please. right? It's, it, it, there's a, there is, contrary to what some people believe, there is enough room for all of us because we're each bringing something very different to the table. So we really have to grab each other on the side and, and, and really hold each, each other up. And, we, and, and corporations, look, if we are really trying to promote inclusion, if we are really truly trying to, and you know this, Monique, from, a, from an HR perspective, you know, people need to feel like it's okay for them to bring their authentic selves. Because face it, when other cultures are bringing their authentic selves, sometimes that doesn't look so great. But yet we feel like we have to do and do this and that and cut this and cut that and all of that. When we all just have to read the room. That's mm -hmm. all we have to do. We all just have to read the room. So I love that. I, so what was the aha moment when you guys realized, look, all right. I am good enough. You know, you brought that up, Monique. When, when was what was the thing that triggered you to go? Well, what, what am I doing? Like, well, of course I'm enough. I think I thought I could do it on my own because in my mind I can do anything. I had to do anything on my own, and that's why we're dying mm -hmm. at 50, 52, because we're oh we're strong, black girl magic, and that's that's a beautiful phrase. But that doesn't mean that we're magicians or that we have some special kind of powers or that we're stronger than everybody. We don't hurt. That's not true. We hurt. We get yeah. tired. We have ambitions. Yeah. We want to be light. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we're human. We're human. <laughs> we are human. Like that, that, that simple point yeah. seems so lost mm -hmm. in the world. Like we are human. We're not a different breed. Yes. We're not like we are human so for me i had to finally seek a, a a coaching program it was a a professional coaching program and uh the coach was freaking phenomenal and she was ex-military and she just called me on my bs because i was all you know smile and she was like mm -hmm. i can see right through that smile she was like you are angry as h-e-double-l yeah. i was like no i'm not and she was like yeah you are because i used to be you mm -hmm. and she just really helped me walk through um, my emotions and why I was so angry. And I think from holding in frustration for so long, like that does something to you chemically, physically, yeah. emotionally, mentally. Yeah. Um, and, and she really helped me to release all that. And when I finally broke through, it was just like, Whoa! you know, just, you better sing it. <laughs> it. It was, it was, it was phenomenal. It wasn't easy. That. It wasn't yeah. easy. And I still have to work at it. Yes. But once I saw, I, t I took like the, the smoky lens glasses off. I was like, yes. wait a minute. Yes. I was the most educated. I was the smallest or the uh, smartest. You know, everybody was coming to my office after hours to pick my brain. So wait a Step minute. Into your power. Yeah. So I was like, and, yeah. and I'll say like, you're not going to be for everybody. Everything's not a fit, just like a yeah. puzzle. Everything's not a fit, but there is a fit for someone just like me, just like Nikita, just like you, Karee, just like every other sister, whether that's in business for yourself, there are corporations that are like, bring it on. We want somebody who can come in here and take care of business and get everything together. Then there's other corporations where if you want to play that political game and, and nod and, yeah, okay, yeah, sounds great. And then, you know, there, there are people who, who are great at that. I'm not one of them, but but there are people that, that can navigate that space. So um, I, I just think once I got that aha moment and mm -hmm. then I, I, I re-remembered whose I was, yeah. you know, I'm a child of the most high, period, that period. Right. He, and like my mama say, he, God don't make no junk. <laughs> I was right. like, wait a minute. That's true. And so I, I revitalized my prayer life, my spiritual life. Um, I started meditating. Yeah. I started taking a second before I opened my trap and started talking. I started thinking through, I, I calmed down. You know, my mom told me, she said, I, I think you added 10 years onto your life Wow. after leaving corporate. And, and it's true. I'm just, I'm so much more, I can think my thoughts are click girl, me and Nikita get on the call. We're like, what? <laughs> because, because I'm, I'm in that space. I'm in that creative space. I don't have to be all paranoid. Like, well, if I talk too much, somebody going to call me a know-it-all and, 
oh geez, I'm gonna make so and so look like they incompetent because yeah. they are in their own heads. Don't we yes. stay in the in the so in the so 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 profound what you're talking about? Because a couple things that I took out of there, just two, because I took probably about ten, but just two. With one is that it's okay to talk to somebody, right? It's yes. Not, it's okay to talk about. And the other thing is, it's a journey. Like you don't yes. just get there. Like my company is called A Woman Evolves Up because it's a continual process. Continual. Like you mm-hmm. cannot, you, 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 as you grow and as you have more experiences, sometimes you have to remind yourself of these kind of lessons. And that's why I like having these discussions like we are having today. You know, I want to ask you, because you guys have talked to, you know, several people uh, and through your podcast and you know are you seeing some of these same issues coming up are you seeing some of the similarities like are you going oh my god that was just like what so-and-so said or oh my goodness that's just like what I was feeling you know last year at whatever are you seeing that and how and, and kind of the b part to that is how important is it for us to mentor each other and to have mentors Absolutely. We are seeing similar stories on different faces um, in the podcast and the people that we are introduced to in between the podcast. And, and, and for me, what, what we're seeing is there are spaces for you and there are some spaces that are just not for you. And we have to be able to realize when our expiration date has come, either by way of discomfort or you don't got fired because sometimes that firing is a blessing y'all Ooh, say so, that. so be we have to start realizing to monique's point and to the point we made about our worth and our uh, our being authentic and and knowing that we're enough if our time has come, we've done all of that it is that we're supposed to do in that space. And now it is time to move on and do something either somewhere else for ourselves, for someone else, with someone else. But it's okay to evolve and move on. And so we have to, yes, does that stuff hurt and sting? Does it leave you questioning? Was I good enough? Did I do something wrong? What happened? Sometimes you might come to answers about that. Sometimes you just have to accept that it happened and there was something else for you to do. Mm -hmm. And you might not understand it all while it's happening, when it happened, but trust and believe when you get to that next thing, it's going to all make sense because it's going to be so much sweeter on the other side of it. Whether that is resuming the glow of your life and adding 10 years because you're not stressed, you have released anger, you have released anxiety, it's going to make sense. Once you accept that that leg of your journey has taken a new direction and now this is where I'm supposed to be and this is where I'm supposed to go. So yes, we have talked to women who have been um, stepped on, stepped over, kicked out, drop kicked, elevated. I mean, and and not every story is a horror story. So let's be clear on that because we see plenty of examples on LinkedIn of of sisters who are being elevated to general counsels and chief legal counsels, um, chief legal officers and and amazing leadership roles in other organizations. And we pray for them. We pray that they are covered and we pray that they um, are able to make an impact and, and that their lives are balanced and and they are well. So there there are stories of people that thrive and there are stories of people that have experienced some trauma and they thrive after they are released from that. So we're all in positions to thrive. And so I think the beauty of of this podcast is hearing the similarity as well as the differences in our journeys towards thriving. The end end result is always that we're going to win. And so we want to be able to provide resources, um, shared stories about our paths so that people don't feel that isolation when they're in the midst of, of journeys that that are in between. There's forks in the roads and you're not sure what's next or why this is happening. Or um, So those stories are, are, are so incredibly important to share um, because they're so similar and because I think that they give us hope um, for hanging on in there for what's what's coming next. And I'm sorry, yes. next question. No, right? no, no, no. That is so good because the truth of the matter is, is we are on a journey and parts of your journey are seasonal. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And yes. sometimes we mistake it. We, we, we fall into that whole trap of where I am in my present is, you know, this is everything, but this is where you are right now in your journey. And the other thing that you said that completely resonates with me is sometimes, you know, your environment is not where you need to be anymore. It's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Those same skills and tools that you had that you took there, you gather some more knowledge and know-how and some lessons learned, and you'll thrive when you go somewhere mm-hmm. else with those. And I tell people a lot, when you look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself anymore, that might be the time for you to reevaluate your current yeah. environment. So I'm not trying to send anybody to you, Monique, for HR advice. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, that, that you, it's a journey. It's called a journey uh, for a reason. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Yeah, go you know, I see, I see you got a word on your mouth. Go on and tell me. You know, something too <laughs> is that the journey is not meant to be walked alone. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think now is such a unique and powerful time to live because we've had to walk the journey alone, but we're not meant to be alone. We're meant to have community. Mm. And so I'm starting to see black women coming together. How can I help you sis? What can I do for you? I'll mentor you. Um, And I'm, I'm extremely passionate about that because a lot of times sister behind me, not going to get through the door if I don't put my toe in it and hold it open. And, And that's not, I mean, that's, that's facts. That's, that's what I know. So us supporting one another is something that I haven't ever experienced in my lifetime. I used to go to events and, you know, if you, if you saw another sister, you know how you do that, like, Hey, and then she acts like she didn't see you or whatever. And I understand because, you know, I think, I think there was a mindset that there wasn't enough room for the top because that, that was what, what I think we were conditioned to believe. And I see that changing. I see. Don't believe the hype, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and again, there's a lot of historical reasons, but yeah. now I, I see sisters like, hey, you know, so, so what do you do? How can I help you? Yes. You know, and, and that's why I love our platform because our only goal is to lift up these awesome, awesome black female entrepreneurs. We, we don't have any side goal or anything to it. That's what makes it so exciting because we're getting, we're, we're just getting excitement from hearing everybody's story. Like, what are you doing? Oh, oh, what are you doing? Oh, well, how about you connect this sister with this sister and that sister? And I think the more and more we start doing that and, 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 be, and becoming a strong, tight knit community, yeah. the more things we're going to be able to accomplish. I mean, it just, oh it goodness. just is, we can't, we can't do it by ourselves. I know, you know, oh, you're strong. I don't care how strong you are. You can't carry a one ton, you know, <laughs> anvil, you know, that, that thing with the road, road runner and with the heat <laughs> to drop on them. I don't care how strong oh, you can't carry that by yourself. But mm-hmm. if you, if you lock arms with mm-hmm. some other powerful, strong sisters, you all can carry it together and you're all strong. So yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Those stories help us to get strong in our identity because sometimes we shy away from the things about ourselves that we don't think are similar enough to what other people are experiencing. And Mm -hmm. so to hear someone else say, oh yeah, I did that and I do this. And you're like, really? So like Corey, when we spoke to you and I'm like, wait, she's an attorney and she went on tour. She sings it. I, I, I didn't know that that could happen I didn't know that I thought I'm like well I'm just gonna try to dibble and dabble and see what happened but no there there is a model Mm -hmm. there's someone else that I can talk to that that understands that this is the thing I can be that Mm -hmm. I can I can it's it's yeah it's 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 exciting I love how both of you are saying um, go ahead please go ahead go ahead this is good go ahead no I'm sorry you know what Nikki that's super powerful because (laughs) I didn't have anybody to look up to. I never saw anybody to, who looked like me. I was the only in every situation. So when you don't see somebody, then you're kind of like, okay, um, I guess I just have to figure it out. So, so that's powerful. That is, that is extremely powerful. When you see people who look like you, who have made it mm-hmm. to the top of the mountain, then there's a certain confidence to say, hey, she made it. I can make it too. But when you don't see that person, it's like, well, okay. And you're kind of navigating through the political landmines by yourself. 
nobody's pulling your coattails. They're just watching you get a leg blown off, <laughs> your ear blown off. Right. Like, like nobody is helping you. It's hard. It's tough. Yeah, it is. And you know what's the truth is, is that this is, a not, this is not uncharted territory. Other people have gone through things, but I don't know if we've always shared it. I know I personally am standing on the shoulders of a whole bunch of folks and not just historical figures. Sometimes it's in your own family. My mama, you know, kind of thinks sisters and 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 sisters not necessarily by birth uh any anybody want to speak to any shoulders that you're standing on monique you want to go which one you want to go yeah which so one? so i'll say um my mama my mom is 81 years old and she always always she always told me she was like there ain't nothing you can't do nothing i'd come home hold, hold your head up whatever room you walk in, you walk in like you own it. She was like, I don't care if you don't own it. So my mama was really very strong in that area. She always made me believe I could do anything I wanted to. She would yeah. tell me, ain't nobody better than you. Everybody puts on their pants the same way, period. Right. And, and when you hear that in your, your entire life, you're like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you ain't no better than I am, period, you know? Um, she would always, you know, tell me I have two brothers. You're smart. You're mm -hmm. smart. Use your brains for good. But she also hammered on us about the Lord, too. Like, you better live right. Be truthful. I don't care if people are lying about you and they're scheming you out of my... You always do what's right. So a high level of integrity. Because mm -hmm. to this day, my mama lives with me. My mama and my dad. Now, 81. Oh, to this day, I, I would never do anything to disrespect my mother, ever. Ever and, and and there's something in that because I, I because I would never do that to her, I would never disappoint her by lying or cheating or stealing from someone else. So just that high level of integrity and that high level of I can do it. That's why I like, like I said, jump out of plane. Okay, I can do it. Yeah, that's that foundation that we stand on. What about you, Nikita? I would say I generally stand on the shoulders of black women who don't take no for an answer. And I would give an as as an example, my grandmother and my, my mother as well. My grandmother came to Chicago from this little bitty town that you probably can't find on a map called Tennel, <laughs> Georgia, by herself. Um, I want to say she was 18, nowhere to live, just came here and figured it out. Figured mm -hmm. out that's when people were sharing rooms and she wound up going to nursing school and just thrived. Now, was everything perfect? No, but she never took no for an answer. And my grandmother, I just visited her um, this past Christmas. She will be 92 years old this year. She is still alive and kicking and on Facebook and tagging people and <laughs> Um, I love it. And, and so, so that, that kind of commitment to self and surviving, surviving is what I'm really feeling yeah. it is, is, is who I pay homage to as well as my mother who went to nursing school, raised children, went back to school, transitioned from being a practicing nurse to a nurse educator and retired and still is going back and teaching and just she has lived in Chicago. She got a job in Florida. She has retired. She moved to Georgia. She, so she just said they both are really strong examples to me of surviving and thriving and pursuing and winning and going and loving and living. And so I yeah. want to make them proud. I yeah. want to be a great model for my two daughters who come be behind me to know Whatever it is that you want with the right plan, you can do it. You, you can, can do, do it. it. And so that, those are those are the shoulders I'm standing on. Oh, that just I'm just getting chilled all up the left side, maybe because that's closer to my heart. But I love uh, that we are experiencing this community of honoring our, you know, being legacy and honoring those people who have gone before us. And let me just hasten to say a shout out to my mom, who is also 91 will be 91 in February. Oh, so yeah. I'm excited about that and, and her mom before her and and and, and I want to shout out the men who support 
strong women. That's so nice. shout out to my daddy who's gone on to glory, but I, I, he lives with me uh, every day. But it's just so important. I think it's okay. I love these messages. It's okay for us to honor family. You know, as we go on our journeys, that's important, but we don't have to downplay that. So I love that. Look, I would be remiss if I did not bring this on back to uh, black coffee. <laughs> I have a candle. I just, you know, with the side of the candle, what, what if I just want the candle without the coffee? <laughs> you know, so we can do that too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But what, what can we look for? Uh, how can we support uh, what you guys are doing, because you're doing uh, some amazing things. And I just want to shout you both out uh, for coming together and bringing your expertise to, to do this thing for, for women, for Black women specifically, and unashamedly and unapologetically. I, I love that. What can we look for from you guys? How can we support you? Where can we tune in? Tell us everything we need to know. Yes. So the biggest thing you all, this wonderful community of listeners can do is to follow, subscribe, watch our videos and share. Um, we have a YouTube channel, Black Coffee with a Side of Candor, um, where all of our episodes are posted for your visual um, podcast experience, as we say. Um, and we're also on all of your streaming outlets as Black Coffee with a Side of Candor. If you're commuting or you're listening while you're working or working out, we'd love for you to tune in and like and share. Um, we are planning a wonderful, inspiring campaign, the details of which we will hold back a little bit while we um, continue to build and plan, but we're looking forward to sharing that um, in, the, in a couple months with you all. Yeah. Um, but we really, we really are, our goal is to increase the access to the content, which means we want to increase our viewership. And um, so we would really, really um, love it. We also have an Instagram page, um, Black, Black Coffee with a Side of Candor. I believe that's the name. I'm gonna check it out and make sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You know, other things that I'm just gonna start speaking things as if they were, hopefully we will, um, gain sponsors so that we can do bigger and better things with our content and be able to host um, more and more amazing um, women on the show. Um, I see ourselves being keynotes at conferences or meetings or breakfasts, and we would love to um, come and talk talk to women across America um, to let you know provide that sense of support. Um, I think it's a different kind of mentorship. It's not it's not the traditional one on one mentor with regular meetings, but it is. Let me tap in and tune in to get get some gas in my tank to to oh, let me know that I'm I'm seen and I'm heard and somebody that looks like me has survived what I've been through. And they look look how good they look and look yes. what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, and, and look I, how good y'all get there too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Listen, you guys, let's make this thing go viral. Let's blow this thing up. Get on that black coffee with a side of candor. Let's talk about it. Share you. If nothing else, you got to share the name. But even beyond the name, there are just so many beautiful things. The messages. What you're hearing out of these women is what you're going to hear out of black coffee with a side of candor. So I'm just really pleased that you guys have come on. Uh, to the AWE radio platform to talk about this amazing platform that you guys have started. And I am decree decreeing upon you much success, prosperity, wealth, all of it, happiness, health, everything. And let's reach back and make some other woman a better leader than we are today. I got to ask you guys uh, before we go, and, and let me just say this. We want you guys got to come back first of all because you guys got stuff coming up and I can't say anything and so since I can't say anything you have to come back so I won't be accused because I signed a non disclosure agreement <laughs> and I can't talk about it so I'm gonna need you to come back when you guys start launching this stuff come back on here and tell us how we can participate in what you guys are doing but I want to know I want to know before I go before we go and I'm gonna start with you Mo what would you say is your personal woman evolved? I mean, if it's one word, two words, three words, five, how many, what is your personal woman evolved? 
I would say um, I'm good enough. I love that. Period. Love no that. explanation. Period. Paragraph. Period. <laughs> No explanation. With the T on the end. I yep. love that. I love that. And come on, yeah, Nikita, tell us what is your woman evolve? I would say I can. Mm. Oh and my goodness. Whether that is something that you affirmatively want to do or I can say no. <laughs> yes. Hey, yes. okay, there's that part. Yes. Look, folks, we have come upon the end of our hour, but I, if you're like me, I know you have truly been blessed by these beautiful ladies here. I just want you to give a virtual round of applause for Miss Nikita Michelle uh, Gatson and Miss Monique Gibson. These ladies are beautiful. They're doing their thing. I got to say it one more time, black coffee with a side of candor. I'm your girl, Karee, on AWE Radio where we are unapologetically empowered and always on with information and inspiration for your transformation. Until next time, be empowered and always enjoy the journey. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome.